Our next guest coming up on the show today is Dory Wiley. And uh, Dory is just a wealth of information. Uh, Capital Markets, uh, Commerce Holding Streets is his company. He's a CEO and president. Dory, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for having me, Michael. Good to talk to you again. Yeah, you were on our old show. I'm, I'm glad that you just stepped up and came back. Uh, if you would, Dory, please give us a, a brief background of, of you and what your company does, and then we'll drill right down into some of the things that we want to talk about today. Well, sure, Michael. Uh, my background is in, I'm in finance. I started in banking and have been investing uh, for 30 years in active management, private equity, hedge funds. Uh, I've been chairman of an uh, investment committee of a $130 billion pension fund. So I've, I've been uh, active in a lot of different areas, and the uh, latest venture has been into uh, retirement plans, and that's a real exciting area for us. So Commerce Street uh, Capital and Commerce Street Holdings uh, really does all those things I just mentioned, a uh, heavy focus on mergers and acquisitions, private placements, investing, private equity, hedge funds, and uh, uh, mezzanine funds, as well as uh, structured finance and now retirement plans. Why are you moving in in that direction? And you obviously you're a brilliant man. You've made fortunes for people as well as yourself in this industry sector. Why are you focusing here on the retirement industry right now? Well, it's a great it's a great question, and we we followed it for about twenty years. And uh, I think it's there's not a lot of money in it to be honest with you. And the world needs another provider of retirement plans like a hole in the head. Uh, but when the lawsuit started. That's when we got interested. Uh, we've been watching it for a long time, and quite frankly, I'm from the institutional world, and I couldn't understand why retirement plans had such heavy fees, conflicts of interest. Think like cable company or, or your phone bills. You know, you can't figure out the fees. Everything's hidden. There's conflicts of interest. And then now there, there are over 90 lawsuits filed in the last 10 years on retirement plans. And whenever there's pain, there's opportunity for change. And that's why we got involved, because a lot of these lawsuits involved all these primary providers being sued by their own employees, Michael, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. What are you doing different that the other industries, uh, providers in this sector, are not? Well, to be honest with you, we're trying to address all the issues that are being taken up in front of the court and have, that have been ignored by the DOL and the market for the last 30 or 40 years, primarily because we've been in such heavy bull markets. Uh, these issues come to forefront when performance isn't so good, then people start paying attention. So the industry started 40-plus years ago when insurance companies got involved and mutual fund companies, and they were pushing product, and they're trying to sell product. But at the end of the day, who is the portfolio manager for the participant? Who is the fiduciary for right. that participant? Well, it gets hung on the plan sponsor, the company. Well, the company doesn't have that expertise. And so for now, 40 years later, they're getting sued, and they don't understand why. And so what we come in and said, we'll be a fiduciary. We'll be independent. We'll disclose all fees. We'll use independent funds. We'll create portfolios. We won't charge them, and our portfolios will have institutional-type performance for the participant. Wow. We've got about two minutes left in this segment. We're going to come back and, and pick it up on the other side of the break. But who is your, your, your client? Who are the people that will most apt come to you for your services? You know, quite frankly, because we do so many things, a lot of it's some existing clients, and some of them are new. Some of them are startup companies, and then we have some that are showing up that have $250 million and $500 million and a billion-dollar plans going, help us, help us, because this isn't structured right, and we think we have uh, legal liability here. So it's really anybody with a 401k, a 457 retirement plan, or a 403b retirement plan, you know, like in a hospital or, or something like that, or uh, in university, uh, we can help all of them. Okay. You have seven different pri private equity funds. I don't want to get too far off the topic, but I want people to know that there's a huge portfolio of services that your companies provide. Talk to me about that for a minute, if you can. Well, the private equity focuses in two areas, one in the banking sector, which was our core competency when we started 20 plus years ago. Um, so we do have private equity firms that focus funds that focus on that. 
The other funds that we have are focus on mezzanine or private equity funds in small businesses with EBITDA ranges of, I would say, $3 million in size to $50 million in size. All right, let's do this. Uh, Dory, let's take a break right now. We'll pick up where we left off and continue on the other side of the break, all right? Sounds great, Michael. All right, we, you've been listening to CEO Money, talking to Dory Wiley, President, CEO, Commerce Street Holdings. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. This, that segment has been sponsored by Tycon Partners. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. All right, we are talking with Dory Wiley, CEO and President of Commerce Street Holdings. Uh, Dory, welcome back to the show. Glad to be here. If I may uh, indulge myself a little bit, I'd like to get your opinion because uh, you have so many different facets to your businesses of what is going on in the private equity uh, sector, what you see going on in the uh, mergers and acquisitions and the private placement sector. And in in the economy as as a whole, we've had a huge run in the economy. And I'd like to just step back and get the lay of the land, how Dory Wiley sees it. Well, to keep it real simple, there's, there's a lot more dollars chasing investment opportunities than there are investment opportunities chasing dollars. Too many dollars chasing too few of opportunities, okay? Mm -hmm. Rates are really low. There's a lot of money. There's no place for it to go. A lot of that is stacking up in the stock market, right? We've got a very inflated stock market, historically high numbers. However, it could go higher because there's still a lot of liquidity out there. So I wouldn't necessarily bet against it. Same way with private equity. There's a lot of private equity funds out there. Unless they have a way to access deals that are proprietary, that are one-on-one, and that are not sold in auctions to compete against 10 or 20 other private equity firms, they're going to have a hard time putting their money to work and outperforming other firms. Same thing with real estate funds, same thing with hedge funds. It's a big problem out there in the market. So the people that have investment opportunities that are really good and solid, whether that be in real estate or banks or companies, public or private, uh, this is a good market for them because they can find capital and they can get it priced correctly. If they know how to market it to the right people. I mean, that's correct. Yeah, you've got to know know the right people to get it get it well, in front of them. Well, that's where a good trustee investment bank comes in handy, hey? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> oh, open that up. You just open that door. Open up. What, talk yeah. to us about that. Well, it really is a lot of work. A lot of people think... Uh, that they can just go raise their own money or go find it because there's this huge supply, and they can. But it is a lot of work sifting through not only how to find the money, but who is the right partner. And right partner is such a fit if you have a small business or a big business or company. You have to have the right shareholder, the right partner with the right mindset because once someone invests in your company, it's like getting married. It's much, much tougher uh, to divorce yourself from that relationship uh, once you're once they put money in your company absolutely and having somebody help you with that courting process to make sure that they are the right partner you know that's that can be just you know you lose your hair over it if it doesn't work out absolutely we have a company right now where we're uh, uh, finding the right partner for them and I think we've talked to probably 250 potential partners Ugh. And we've got it narrowed down to uh, three, and we're picking the best fit. That's the most important thing for the client. They want the best fit. There are plenty of them that will pay the right price, right. but who's the best fit? Yeah, that's, that's well put. What about the mergers and acquisitions? You said there's a lot of money chasing fewer deals. It must be a free-for-all in this industry sector. Well, yes and no, and it sort of depends on the sector. The non-regulated sectors, uh, you'll see an M&A kind of pick up. And, and be fairly robust in sectors, say, like uh, banking and health care, where there's still a lot of questions. You know, is Obamacare going to get repealed? Uh, is Dodd-Frank going to get repealed for banks? Uh, nothing's changed with the CFPB or in, uh, the heads of any of the banking regulatory agencies. So we're seeing interest pick up, but we're not seeing activity pick up. Hmm. Okay. So what what is your favorite sector? I, I, and I don't want to put you on, on, on the spot of being giving advice right now over the air. But the, sure. the, 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 act, the sector 
in mergers and acquisitions you see the most activity? How about that? Uh, I think the non-regulated sector and, and anything that has a, uh, you know, industrial, manufacturing, kind of chemical, those kind of things, real simple to get deals done, high demand. Uh, we're seeing a lot more activity in those sectors. We're seeing some plenty of activity in uh, oil field services and oil and gas related type things as well. Even though uh, I've noticed that there's not a lot of interest in that, but you're saying you're seeing a pickup in that interest in that sector. Uh, in oil and gas? Yeah. Oh, yes, there's plenty of interest. There's a lot of money allocated to oil and gas and energy. And so even they, though they took a scare over the last couple of years with $100 oil coming down to you know, $45, $50 oil, there's still plenty of money wanting to go to work in that sector. And it's intuitive. If you liked it at $100, surely you're interested in it at $50, correct? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an old one. That's good. All sure. right, we've got about a minute to go, but but I wanted real, real quick, 45 seconds if you could, your take on what's going to happen next in the economy and, and where people should be should be looking for opportunities. Well, I think it's a good idea to be careful to tune out politics right now. There's World War III going on in uh, Washington, D.C., and it's all involved with the major media outlets, et cetera. So you have to kind of tune some of that stuff out because Trump wasn't supposed to win. Right. And it makes it very, very difficult to figure out the tone of the economy being positive or negative. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of positive things going on in the economy. And it looks really good. Is it overheated in some areas? Sure. But we don't have a 1980s thing going on. We don't have a 2000 tech bubble going on. Uh, We have some high-priced tech stocks going on. But the fundamentals are much better now than they were in 2000. Uh, And then I would say in 2008, the leverage out there, while it's, it's, it's big in some sectors, it's not in the banking industry. The banking industry has way more capital than it did in 2008, and there's not a bunch of off-balance sheet leveraging going on. So uh, could we see a correction? Yes. Will we see a crash? No, not going to happen. We could have a slowdown, but that's our downside. So I think there's probably more upside than downside, given uh, you've got a D.C. and a Congress and a president trying to figure themselves out and get things done. But in the meantime, there's a lot of deregulation going on that's not being reported on. And uh, the administration's promise of, you know, getting rid of regulations for every one that they – five for every one that they're putting on or whatever he promised, that's happening. And it's really starting to help the economy. Right. Dory, we've got to end it there. I want to thank you for being our guest, and I'll just extend an invitation to come back anytime. Anytime, Michael, and it's always good to talk to you. Thank you. Dory Wiley, CEO, President of Commerce Street Holdings. CommerceStreetCapital.com is where you can find this gentleman.